Now to how our top two stories are connected. Republicans continue to hammer President Biden for being weak when it comes to China. It's just not true. But, but our whatever. next guest argues it's the GOP's manufactured debt crisis that forced the president to cut short his overseas trip, one that was designed to shore up influence with countries in the region and pressure Beijing. So joining us now, professor of journalism and political science at the Newmark School of Journalism at the Sydney University of New York, Peter Beinart. He's also author of the Beinart Notebook on Substack. Yeah, you know, Peter, this, this argument that Biden's made us weak in China, again, if you look at Again, how we've strengthened our, our presence in Guam, they have alliances with Philippines, Japan, what they're doing, Australia. It doesn't hold a lot of water. And then you start looking at your argument about uh, about bringing Biden back for this manufactured debt ceiling crisis actually makes Republicans look far more responsible. That's right. I mean, the irony is that Republicans are trying to define themselves as the tough on China party, as you say, constantly attacking Biden for not being tough enough. And even in the states doing kind of crazy things like preventing Chinese nationals from even buying property in the U.S. And yet here they're creating this debt crisis at a very time when Biden is going to Asia to try to visit some countries where China has made inroads and he has to come back because America's political system looks completely dysfunctional because the Republicans won't increase the debt. So what the Republicans don't seem to understand is that ultimately this competition is a competition between political and economic systems. And if you make America's political system look completely bankrupt and dysfunctional, you're actually making America weak vis-a-vis -vis China. So Peter, let's talk about this a little bit further. Uh, my senior White House aides told me last week when the decision was made to pull down the back half of the trip, I mean, they were deeply frustrated, the president personally so, because this was something Australia, Papua New Guinea, the whole point of this part of the trip was to try to, to show, hey, America is here. We have a presence. We're a bulwark to China's rising influence. But it's more than that. The chatter at the G7 was the, with the U.S. facing this debt crisis is how reliable is the U.S. right now? If they were to default, the global implications would be massive. And it, it seems to fuel these whispers behind the scenes, these worried whispers. Not only is the U.S. maybe not reliable now, but there's still at least the chance that Donald Trump could be president again and what that would do to the world order. Right. And what the U.S. is saying to its allies in Asia is, you can count on us. We will be here, right? The, those countries in Asia know that China will be there. China's not going anywhere. China is their neighbor, right? But the U.S. keeps doing things that suggest that, in fact, it's not a reliable partner. And yes, the U.S. can increase defense spending. It can put in new military bases in the Philippines and other things. But ultimately, what we learned from the Cold War is that these that economic strength, that the health of your political system is ultimately at the core of what makes you a strong country. And if the U.S. doesn't have that in order, it ultimately isn't going to prevail. Peter, also, uh, some of the fallout from the hard line that uh, the Republicans are at least rhetorically taking has also spilled over with, uh, in many uh, cases, the rise of uh, hate crimes against Asians yes. in America. Yes. Talk to us about how uh, there is the tension <clears throat> yeah. between the rhetoric they've yes. given and how just average Asian Americans have been victimized with increase in hate crime. Yes. As you know, the U.S. has a very dark history when it comes to demonizing people that we associate with foreign enemies. The U.S. was vicious towards German Americans during World War I. A lot of people had to change their names because it was so dangerous to be German. We put Japanese in internment camps during World War II. They were Asian Americans who were beaten and even killed during in the 80s when people were afraid of Japan. So we have a history of doing this. And unfortunately, and so you have to be extremely careful. To, to make the point that we have an issue with a, a competition with a government, not with the entire Chinese people, and certainly not with everyone who, who is Chinese or looks Chinese in the United States. We need to continue to allow people to immigrate to our shores from Asia because it makes us a stronger country. But when Donald Trump talks about these, all these kind of, I won't even repeat his racist comments right. about, about COVID and all these things, and now we're seeing it at the state level, that begin, builds something that is very difficult to contain. All right, Peter Beinart, thank you very much for being on thank this you. morning. We appreciate your insight. Thanks, and Peter.